Hello guys and welcome to this video on simplifying expressions. For this particular video I'm going to start us off by throwing us straight in at the deep end. We're going to have a go at simplifying the really nasty looking expression you can see on the screen in front of you. So when I simplify expressions, and this is also sometimes called collecting like terms, what I need to do is I need to take that enormous expression with all of its terms in and I need to identify any of the terms that are from the same category. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I just highlight the plus 10 and the minus 4, they're from the same category because they're both integers. They don't have any x's in, they don't have any x squared in, they don't have any a's in or b's or c's for that matter. They are just pure numbers. So my positive 10 and my negative 4. What's also important to remember here is that you include the signs with your terms, just so we don't get confused and accidentally add 4 to this when we should be taking 4 away. So the next term I'm going to look at and identify are the x terms. Now you'll notice I've circled the term at the front of 3x and a term sort of in the middle, negative 5x. The term at the front most often won't have a sign in front of it. Now if it's a negative term I have to tell you that and I have to write the negative symbol. So just because it hasn't got a sign there means that it's actually a positive term and you may want to write that one in just so you don't make any mistakes. The next term I'm going to have a look at are the x squareds. Now some of you might be looking at this and thinking well why is an x and an x squared different because they've both got the letter x in but remember x squared means that I've taken a number and squared it, whereas x just means it's that number with nothing else happening to it. A good example of this would be asking if 10 squared is the same as 10. Well, 10 squared is 100 and 10 is just 10, so they are totally different things. Again, I'm including the signs on these, so I've got positive 5x squared and a positive 7x squared. And lastly, I can see that there are some a terms in this, negative 2a and a positive a. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the terms that I've identified as being from the same category and I'm going to put them together. They should be able to combine with one another. So if I take the x squareds to start off with, I can see I've got plus 5x squareds and plus 7x squareds, giving me a total of positive 12x squareds. If I look at the x's, I can see that I've got positive 3x and a negative 5x. So when I combine those two, I'm going to end up with an overall negative 2x. And just a reminder at this point, don't forget not to get your x squareds and your x's confused. They are totally distinct things to one another. Moving on to the next category of term, I'm going to look at the a's and I can see that I've got negative 2a and a positive a, leaving me overall with a negative 1a. And obviously we don't need to write the 1 there. The final ones I'm going to combine are just my numbers, my integers. So plus 10 minus the 4 gives me positive 6. So these are all of the terms that are going to be left over after I've collected the like terms and simplified the expression. The whole thing is going to reduce down to 12x squared minus 2x's minus an a and plus 6. In this example, which is obviously a lot more simple than the previous one, all we're going to do is exactly the same steps. We're going to identify any of these terms that are from the same category, combine them, and come up with a simpler expression at the end. So to start off with this one, I can see that I've got 5x's and minus 3x's here. So 5x minus 3x is going to give me a positive 2x. And I can see that I've also got a plus 7 and a minus 13. And when I combine those two, it's going to give me overall negative 6. So that expression simplifies down to 2x minus 6. Here's another example. And what I'm trying to do here is maybe try and catch you out with the squares and just the a terms. So really careful on this one. When we put these together, I can see that I have a squared. And remember, that's a positive if it's at the front and doesn't have a negative in front of it. This, totally different. This is an A and is not relevant to my A squared. Although they've got the same letter, totally different. And then this one, I've got minus 3A squared. And again, same deal with this one, not interested in it because it's not an A squared term. So I've got 6A squared, take away 3A squared, which leaves me with 3A squared. And then if I look at my A terms, I can see I've got positive 4A and then minus 5a. So that's going to leave me overall with a minus 1, which we don't need to write, a. And that's that expression simplified. Here are some questions for you guys to have a go at yourself. In a minute, pause the video and try them, then hit play and I'll talk you through the answers. Be really careful with these though. I've thrown in a couple that may not simplify, just to get you thinking about them. Hit pause now and I'll show you the answers in a minute. 
Okay, so on this first one, I've got four X's and a single X. So this is going to simplify down to five X minus four when I combine the three and the negative seven. Uh, this next one, I can see that I've got five A take away two A, which is three A and plus three X plus another X gives me a total of four X. So far, so good. They'll all simplify. On to the next one, I can see I've got 13x12, which won't combine with it, minus 3x will, so that will give me 10x's. I've got a positive x squared, just on its own, nothing to combine it with, and the positive 12, again, same thing, on its own, nothing to combine it with. Typically, what we would do with this one is we would write it in descending powers of x. So I'm going to rewrite this one as x squared plus 10x plus the 12 for my final answer. On to the fourth one, I can see that I've got B squared, B's, B cubed, and 4's. So there are no categories of terms here which are the same. In other words, this one already is simplified, and there's nothing more that I can do to that one. Moving on to the next one, I can see I've got 6x squared take away 1x squared, which is positive 5x squared. I can see that if I look at my x's, I've got plus 5x plus another x, so that's going to give me a total of positive 6x's. And on to the final one, I can see that I've got a terms and an a term here at the end. So that will combine to give me a total of 3a's. I can see that I've got plus 3ab plus ab. So in total, I have plus 4ab's. And the minus 2b has nothing to combine with. So that sits out on the end by itself. OK, just to recap on these ones, then remember, terms will only simplify if they're the same category, what we would call like terms and X's together, constant terms together, B's together, etc. Remember to include the sign of each term so that we don't get any errors when we're adding these up at the very end. A letter without a number in front of it is never zero. Otherwise, we wouldn't see it at all. It is one. So an X written by itself with no number in front of it means you have one X. And remember, this is the most important one here. X's and X squareds or A's and A squares will not combine because they are different. Remember my 10 squared and 10 example. Right, guys, thanks for listening to that. Hopefully it was useful. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time.